Hi everyone, I'm here today to do a bit of a book haul. Everything that I will mention, I will list in the description box down below. I've just finished doing a podcast for work and as a guest and because I haven't spoken to people in a while, I swear, don't give me an hour to talk about things when I haven't spoken to people in a while. It was a podcast about how to make it as an author and I think I was talking about my smear test at some point. Not sure how that was relevant. Anyway, so after word vomiting onto that podcast for an hour, I thought I would come in and, and treat you to some of that as well. Okay, let's talk about books, let's talk about books. I was sent this book for review, which is Yes, Yes, More, More by Anna Wood. This is a short story collection and one of her stories was in the anthology Outsiders, which was a book that I was part of last year. So when I was offered a review copy of this, I said, yes, please, thank you very much. It says that these are stories that explore the radical possibilities of pleasure. Two schoolgirls in Bolton take acid just before their English class. A film journalist shares tea in a Kit Kat with Marcel Proust. Proust, 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 how do we say Proust? 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 One of those words that I look at too much and it just, it turns into something else. Anyway, an after party turns into a crime scene. Colleagues may be in love, have lunch and don't quite talk about their relationship. A woman flees to New Orleans and finds unexpected treasures there. Another review copy that I have been sent is this one, which is Ill Feelings by Alice Hattrick. This is coming out in the summer, but I was sent this early to see if I would like to blurb it. This is a book that is about uh, pain, women's pain, chronic illness and disability. So I will be reading this probably very soon if I'm gonna do a quote for it. I also bought a copy of this, which is one of my most anticipated releases of the year. This is The Dangers of Smoking in Bed by Mariana Enriquez. This has just been long listed for the Man Booker International Prize. It's translated from the Spanish by Megan McDowell. It says, welcome to Buenos Aires, a place of nightmares and twisted imaginings, where missing children come back from the dead and unearthed bones carry terrible curses. These brilliant, unsettling tales of revenge, witchcraft, fetishes, disappearances and urban madness spill over with women and girls whose dark inclinations will lead them over the edge. The cover design is by Luke Bird and the illustration is by Pablo Gerardo Gamacho. I mean, this is an amazing cover. I really, really love it. Plus, look, don't we love a French flap? Who else uses French flaps as bookmarks? Is that their intended purpose? I never really know. But if I'm up to halfway through, I'll use the front one to mark my place. And if I'm more than halfway through, I use the back one. Is that what they're for? I should probably know that. I've worked in the book industry a long time. Another review copy that I have been sent is this one, which is The Child by Kirsty A. Scomswald. This is translated from Norwegian by Martin Aitken. This is her talking to her second child after they were born um, about trauma and memory and her own childhood. It says that the woman has given birth and now she holds her second child in her arms. As she speaks to the child, the story of her life emerges, a story of a body worn down by illness, of heartbreak, of a lover stolen and a happiness finally found. I've spoken about the faster I walk, the smaller I am so many times on this channel. I almost hate myself when I mention the title of the book again because I feel like I've mentioned it so many times, but it is one of my favorite books and this is her new book, so. I'm excited. Another book that I have bought recently is Jan Carson's new book. This is a collection of short stories, but it was read out on the radio. So I'm thinking that these have quite a lot of play-like elements to them. And I've certainly felt that way about her work in the past anyway. I first came to her work, I'd heard of her and her book Firestarters, but I first read her work when she was shortlisted for the BBC National Short Story Award in... I want to say October. I think it was October. Hers was my favourite out of all of the shortlisted stories. I loved it. It's available to read online, so I'll link that in the description box down below. But this is her new book called The Last Resort, which is set on a caravan park. It gives me Summer Water vibes by Sarah Moss because of that. Each story is about a character on that caravan park. I think it sounds like a great premise. And if anyone's into interconnected short stories, maybe that is one that you would like to check out. Another of my most anticipated releases, I've got a bit of something on the cover here. 
This is A Blood Condition by Kayo Chigoni. This is his second collection. I love this first one, which was called Kumakanda, which is the name of an initiation ceremony. This one is also about race and identity and multiple selves and locations existing inside one body and how they are fighting for space and how society externally views those things in a hierarchy and how to make peace with that. I really love his work and the nostalgic feel that he has to a lot of his poems. I think that he is wonderful. A non-fiction book that I was sent for review, which is again one of my most anticipated books of the year, is The Sleeping Beauties and Other Stories of Mystery Illnesses by Suzanne O'Sullivan. She won the Welcome Prize a few years ago. And this is a book that's all about unexplained illnesses en masse. So if we think about the dancing plagues of 15, I wanna say 15, 18. There were several dancing plagues, which were the inspiration for the red shoes. People across Europe, groups of people couldn't stop dancing and then they would just fall down dead in the street. People didn't know why that happened and scientists still argue over why that might have happened today. So these are similar things, but modern phenomena, groups of children who simultaneously fell asleep, um, a bit like at the beginning of Kafka, on the shore by uh, Hiroki Murakami. Anyway, it's looking all around the world at all of these different things and then talking about them. And I find that kind of thing really, really fascinating. A book that I have bought is Selena Godin's new novel. This is Mrs. Death, Mrs. Death. Actually her debut novel, I think. Though she has been around in the literary scene so long. When I moved down to London in 2009 um, and I was trying to do the poetry scene. So I was going to open Mike Nike's open mic nights which were terrifying and were a great initiation into the world of poetry I think and just experiencing what you like or don't like with regard to performance um, I quickly realized that slam poetry is is not my thing I enjoy watching it but I am not going to compete in in the slam competitions um, but there were certain open mic nights which were less about that and, and definitely had more a mixture of the type of um, work that people were reciting. I just kicked the camera there, sorry. And Selena used to run one called the, oh, it's so long ago now, I don't even remember. It was the something bo boutique, the book boutique? Oh, I don't know, but it was in an underground bar in East London, of course it was, and, um, there was a makeshift curtain across the stage and I remember going there and performing with her and she used, to, she used to often recite one of her poems or short stories which was called The Good Cock and it was the most outrageous story, hilarious and she would bring the house down every single time and I think I've heard her recite that a lot and I still didn't get tired of it because her charisma is incredible. So she writes poetry, she writes short stories, um, she's written for radio, she's had a radio show for ages. So it, it feels strange to say that this is her debut novel because I feel like I'm really familiar with her and her work and have been for a long time and I think that she's just, she's just fantastic. Anyway, this is Mrs. Death, Mrs. Death and it is about a woman called Mrs. Death who is Death who is a black working class woman and she's going around. I don't know if she's introducing people to the fact that they're going to die or if she's just looking back on her life and all the people that she's had to introduce to death. So whether it's a retrospective in real time, I don't know, but I'm sure it's gonna be great because she is great. Another book that I have bought recently is The Shape of Sound by Fiona Murphy. I heard someone saying how great this was and I now can't remember who that person was. It was someone on Instagram that I follow? That's very frustrating that I now can't remember. Oh, I think maybe it was Carly because Carly Finley has a quote on the back. So it was probably Carly and I will link Carly's Instagram in the description box down below. She's the person who edited uh, Growing Up Disabled in Australia and this book is published in Australia so it would make sense if it was her that I had seen talk about it. It's got a quote on the front from um, Brie Lee and Sarah Krosenstein who wrote The Trauma Cleaner. So it says, Fiona Murphy kept her secret for over 25 years. This is nonfiction. But then desperate to pursue her career, she tried hearing aids. Shocked by the sound of the world, she vowed never again to wear them. 
Eventually, she discovered that sign language could change her life and that deaf culture could be part of her identity. The Shape of Sound is a compelling exploration of sound, silence and the self, a memoir about the corrosive power of secrets and how deaf experiences and disability are shaped by economics, politics, medicine and societal expectations. This is the story of how Fiona learned to listen to her body. In a similar vein, I bought this, which is Care Work, Dreaming Disability Justice, by the writer and activist Leia Lakshmi Piepsner Samara Shinna. And this is a non-fiction book about care work. It says it explores the realities and the politics of disability justice, a movement that centers the lives and the leadership of sick and disabled queer, trans, black and brown people with knowledge and gifts for all. Care work is a mapping of access as radical love, a celebration of the work that sick and disabled people and queer people of color are doing to find each other and to build power and community and a toolkit for everyone who wants to build radically resilient sustainable communities of liberation where no one is left behind. I mentioned this in my booktuber shout out video which I'll link in the description box down below but I bought this because it's illustrated by Nicole who is a fellow booktuber. This is Cinderella and the Glass Ceiling and Other Feminist Fairy Tales by Laura Lane and Ellen Han and this is illustrated by Nicole Miles. Um, I mean obviously it's up my street. The River's Memory by Sandra Gale Lampert. She's got a quote on the back from Tayari Jones, which is, I mean, frame that. Definitely frame that. The blurb says, a woman born without legs spends her days swimming with manatees. Two artists separated by centuries guide each other's hands and a child of the Florida frontier sits on the graves of her siblings to think about race relations and the habits of caterpillars. These are some of the women who live along the banks of a river where water billows from caverns of silent lakes. None of them are famous, none of them have children. Instead, their stories exist in a mosaic of time and shadowed history and the things of the river, clay and water, trees and bone, carry their memories forward. This sounds amazing. So those are all of the books that I have purchased recently, all been sent for review. As I said, I will list them in the description box down below. I would love to know if you have read any of these or if you are intrigued by any of these books and think you may want to pick them up now that I've mentioned them. I hope that you're having a good week and I will speak to you all very soon. Sending lots of love. Bye.